Good Monday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. And I'll tell you what, not much nicer than today's weather, that's for sure. Beautiful look outside at the uh, Wenatchee Valley, outside on our Wenatchee Heights SkyFi Tower camera up that way. And just crystal clear out there today with hardly a cloud, just a couple uh, late this morning, early afternoon with temperatures very, very comfortable today. But I'll tell you what, as we get in tonight and tomorrow, Get ready for a heat wave here at the end of August. 91 possibly the high for Tuesday. Don't know if we'll get quite to 98 on Wednesday or 95 Thursday, but we are going to be in the low to mid 90s all the way through this week into Friday. Saturday, we will begin to cool down somewhat. Sunday, we'll feel it even more and then possibly some cooler weather next week. But we still have summer to go, folks, and it will feel like it all of this week. We'll tell you more about weather coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. We have more details on that Friday motorhome fire that blocked both lanes of travel for almost three hours on Blewett Pass. After reports of explosions on property south of Twisp early this morning, firefighters responded to find an old tractor on fire. And emergency crews were kept busy Saturday at the NCW Fair in Waterville with several separate incidents. But first, we begin tonight. State troopers say the driver of an SUV was impaired when this vehicle plunged into Lake Chelan Friday evening. Trooper John Bryant says it happened on Highway 150 at milepost 4 when the driver lost control of the vehicle, causing it to crash into the water about 60 feet from shore. The vehicle's oil pan was sheared off when it was pulled from the lake and about seven quarts of motor oil and five gallons of gas was spilled. Washington DOE crews responded with a floating boom to clean, contain the oily residue. The Chelan County Sheriff's Marine Patrol uh, also responded. Well, we have more details tonight on that Friday motorhome fire that blocked both lanes of traffic for almost three hours on Blewett Pass. The 40-foot motorhome pulling a trailer with a quad was being driven by 64-year-old Kim Michael Goodwin of Chelan when it broke down. He pulled to the side of the highway on 97, about six miles north of the summit as it burst into flames. Goodwin was able to escape uninjured, but ammunition inside the motorhome started exploding, leading to the highway closure, according to Trooper John Bryan of the Washington State Patrol. The fire happened at 10.20 in the morning, and one lane of flagged traffic was reopened about 1 in the afternoon. It wasn't until 4.20 that both lanes were fully reopened. After reports of explosions on property south of Twisp early this morning, firefighters responded to find an older tractor on fire. Okanagan County Fire District 6, 6 Chief Cody Accord said the cause of the fire is unknown, but crews were able to contain it to the tractor. The fire was on Beaver Pond Road shortly after 5 a.m. It's about three miles from Twisp. Well, emergency crews were kept busy Saturday at the NCW Fair in Waterville. In one incident, a woman found that her pregnancy and a carnival ride were a bad combination. Sean Ballard of Ballard Ambulance said the woman started having contractions during the ride, but did manage to make it to the hospital without giving birth on the way. Also on Saturday, a horse racer was kicked in the head, but insisted on getting back to racing after having his bleeding head bandaged. Also at the rodeo, a man assisting with the shoot suffered a fractured pelvis after an encounter with a bull. The fair wrapped up its four-day run yesterday. Coming up next, it'll be six or seven more weeks until the Waste Management Transfer Station in South Wenatchee reopens. A major new apartment complex in downtown Wenatchee receives the green light to proceed. And fish and wildlife officials are warning of the invasive fish northern pike and what to do if you catch one. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Where will you be a year from now? You could be working as a medical assistant. The Charter College Medical Assistant Certificate Program gets you work ready in 10 months. Add five more months to earn an associate degree. We prepare you with hands-on training and support you after graduation with job search help and interview skills. Institutionally accredited by the Accrediting Bureau of Health Education Schools, Charter has been training healthcare professionals for more than 30 years. Charter College, we work to get you to work. Some jobs are a calling. They require something deeper. 
an innate devotion to the communities in which we live. At Gisa Credit Union, we help you support local firefighters. With every purchase you make with the Gisa Local Heroes Affinity Debit Card, we make a donation to select firefighter organizations. After all, we can never repay them, but we can do our best to help a little. With the Gisa Firefighters Affinity Debit Card. AC Checker has new owners who put customer service first. When you have to get there on time, call fast, friendly, reliable AC Checker, 663-TAXI. AC Checker has the industry's only on-time or it's free guarantee. Conditions apply. Call AC Checker, 663-TAXI to schedule your cab or schedule online at acchecker.com. Call American Classic Taxi, 663-TAXI. That's 663-8294. Welcome back. In another news, it'll be six or seven more weeks until the Waste Management Transfer Station in South Wenatchee reopens. The transportation, uh, transfer station has been closed since an August 6th fire. A part needed for operating the sliding arms at the station needs to be custom made, causing the delay. That according to Waste Management's Gary Chittum. The fire was in an area housing hydraulics that operate the sliding arms. Arms It caused smoke to pour from the facility. It was about 5.20 p.m. The cause remains under investigation. Residents can use the regional landfill in East Wenatchee or residential waste can be taken to the Dryden Transfer Station. Well, a major new apartment complex in downtown Wenatchee receives the green light to proceed. City Council members approved an agreement with Weedner Apartment Homes to build a five-story, 225-unit housing complex, including underground parking. The property is currently a public parking lot at the corner of Kittitas and Mission Streets. The project is being developed by Weedner Apartments, which also built the two apartment complexes along Riverside Drive. Weedner Representative David, David Avenel testified at Thursday's public hearing. We're here tonight just to, to kind of ask for your support in this partnership as a whole and, and the development agreement. Um, it's a big step towards you know, a downtown living option for Wenatchee and we're excited about it. Like I mentioned, we have experience in the market here. Um, I was touring the, the, uh, the Riverside 9 project earlier today and going over the occupancy rates with them and it, we're at about a 95% rental rate right now and I think it, they anticipated to go up a couple more ticks in the next couple weeks. So um, people are here and, and they, they're, they're excited about what we've brought to market so far. We're excited to continue on that, on that path with you guys. I think the next step is, is the site and uh, I appreciate you guys considering that. The project is supported by the Wenatchee Downtown Association. Executive Director Linda Haglin says it's located within the Central Business Zoning District and situated within a block of Lynx Columbia Station and Centennial Park. The project is getting some pushback from neighboring business owners such as Steve Shroud over parking. In there 30 years. It's jam-packed every workday up and down the block. Around the corner, the wild huckleberry is there. There is no place to park out front on a regular basis. You're adding 500, that's the number just given, 500 vehicles to this spot with 100 parking places. I'm not a genius, but that doesn't work. It will negatively impact my business and I'm very much concerned about it. The council ended the public hearing with a unanimous vote to proceed with the development agreement, which requires the developer to construct adequate parking for the housing development and to provide public parking for 100 stalls through a parking lease with the city. The project is slated for construction in 2022. Northern pike is considered an invasive fish species that threatens endangered salmon. Grant County PUD reports that they've uh, yet to be found in the Columbia River below Grand Coulee Dam, but the utility has posted warning signs like this one at Crescent Bar and all its Columbia River recreation areas as a precaution. Anglers who catch a northern pike, like this bruiser from Lake Roosevelt, should remove it from the river and report it to the State Department of Fish and Wildlife, as according to the Colville Federated Tribes or the relevant PUD, depending on which reservoir you're on. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come. If you need news, stay with us.
I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. 662-6846. It's estimated that one third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. Being able to support yourself and your family is an important part of who we are. We all need to know we're able to provide ourselves with a secure future. Some job seekers have a harder time finding work. That's why Goodwill's Employment Connection Center is here, a free walk-in job search assistance program designed to help people find work. When you shop at or donate to Goodwill, you're really being a job creator. Make plans to attend the August 30th grand opening of the all-new Goodwill on Columbia Center Boulevard in Kennewick. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Dr. Paul Gordon, the new superintendent of the Wenatchee School District, appeared today on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley with Dan Koontz. In tonight's feature story, he said during his first few weeks on the job, he's enjoying Wenatchee and finding the district a good fit. It really felt like the skill set that I bring mm -hmm. uh, was a good match for the school district and the work that still needs to occur in every school district across the country. There's a lot of work to be done. Um, but the foundation here is solid and true. And it's a great place to start. And you can't say that with every school district that has an opening. Gordon also talked about his proposed levy increase of 30 cents per thousand dollars of assessed value as the district continues to deal with budget shortfalls. Um, as we look at the, the financial landscape and understanding where our district is at, um, we believe that the 30 cents, which equates to about $1.58 million that we'll be requesting a, of additional um, levy resources, which will be somewhere probably by the end of the day, somewhere that will increase about 23 cents up to probably around 28 cents uh, by, by the time the, the valuations all come in. But the rationale is the board and the past administration did some great work last spring, hard work last spring, to make some tough decisions around roughly $4.5 million in cuts. And those cuts needed to be made mm -hmm. as we look at the four-year um, projected budgets. E each and every one of those were needed and additional cuts will need to be made. We think, as we think short-term, and long term, the 30 cents is the right place, place for us to be. Um, as we also have to consider the impact of a, a possible future bond for our high schools and for our other facilities. There is a lot of work that needs to be done in our facilities. Um, and then past that, in about a year and a half, we have to um, go back out and repurpose the, the levy again. Uh, and that will, re that will require a community vote. Uh, to reauthorize that, that levy. So we're trying to be very mindful of our taxpayers while also making sure that we're delivering uh, on our core work, educating mm -hmm. students. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you all had a great weekend weather-wise. It wasn't bad out there. We did see some windy conditions on Saturday and plenty of wind yesterday too. But as we look outside our weather window for this afternoon, it was a beautiful day across North Central Washington. This looking upriver from our Rondo Rock SkyFi Tower camera, a very calm Columbia River today. And look at those sky conditions. It was a beauty out there. Temperatures about where they should be for this time of year. 
unofficially in the Wenatchee area. We topped off at 83 degrees. 84 now is our official high, our normal high temperature. 55 is where we started this morning. Probably felt a little bit cooler air, didn't you, as you left the door and walked out the door this morning to go to school or work. Yes, yeah, school already ready to start tomorrow in Wenatchee, Wednesday in Eastmont. A record high temperature for this date. We're below 100 now at 95 degrees. That was set back in 2011. Record low temperature 47 set in 1976. No new precipitation the past 24 hours, so we're stuck still on 4.73 inches of precip for the year. Sunrise this morning at 612 and the sun will set for us tonight at 753. Let's take a peek at that Tuesday weather forecast and things will begin to warm up as we are beginning a warming trend, which will happen beginning tomorrow and we will notice it as far as temperatures go. 90 in Moses Lake, 89 in Afreda, 88 in Quincy, 88 as well here in the Wenatchee area. So yeah, it's going to warm up about 4 degrees tomorrow, 84 for Leavenworth, 78 if you want to cool down, head up to Lake Wenatchee tomorrow, 86 in Chelan and a nice 88 degrees tomorrow in OMAC. Tonight we are seeing mostly clear skies throughout almost all of the western United States. It's because of this area of high pressure. You can see the circulation is clockwise around that high, and that's keeping us nice and clear with the big ridge of high pressure almost all of the uh, western United States. As we move through the week and into Tuesday, not much is going to change. Sunny skies, calm, and we are going to warm up. Keep your eye on the temperatures now. Remember, the darker the orange and reddish colors, the warmer we get. And that indicates about 85 to 95 degrees for Wednesday. It is just going to be a hot day for Wednesday. Most Mostly sunny skies out there, so maybe a little bit of filtered sunshine on Wednesday. We will see more clouds on Thursday. Partly cloudy, it will be hot, but as we make our way late in the afternoon, notice this little pocket of showers. Will this little area of low pressure be enough to bring us some showers Thursday? We'll kind of have to wait and see as our week progresses, and then right back to the warm stuff on Friday. Sunny and hot once again, with temperatures in the low to mid 90s almost throughout north central Washington, and pretty much the same goes for the weekend too. We'll see sunny and hot conditions, especially for Saturday, but things will cool down, especially from our west. Another large area of low pressure is off the coast, and that could change our weather pattern as we get into Sunday and especially as we move into our next work week. Let's take a look now to your quick lube and tune seven day forecast. Tonight, a little bit warmer than what we experienced this morning at 60 degrees for an overnight low. 88 tomorrow, and we are just beginning a warming trend. 94 on Wednesday, 60 the overnight low 92 for your high temperature on Thursday temperatures once again overnight on the mild side in the upper 60s and look at all of those 90s 92 Friday 91 on Saturday to kick off our weekend also a nice overnight low of 68 and then things will begin to change possibly on Sunday with sunny skies to partly cloudy conditions late in the day still warm and still above normal but definitely a cool down with highs on Sunday at around 88. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life evening news continues right after this. Arctic Refrigeration and Heating, serving North Central Washington, is proud to offer the finest heating and cooling air quality products along with prompt and professional customer service since 1984. Regardless of the temperature outside, Arctic is here for you. Arctic offers a variety of services, residential and commercial heating, air conditioning, commercial refrigeration, as well as planned fall and spring maintenance for the overall well-being of your system. Call Arctic Refrigeration and Heating for your heating and cooling needs. Dear Mary Maids, just got home from a trade show and I didn't have time to pick up the house. Kids made chili. Jeff did a mud run. Oh, and Winston shredded Teddy's bed. Again, please clean it the best you can. Oh, except for the statue Max made for me. Thanks, Abby. Hi, Abby. Clean kitchen. Clean bath. Clean floor. Naughty cat. Poor Teddy. The statue is precious. You should keep it forever. See you next time. Mary Maids. 
are you watching me? If you're watching me and you are a business owner in North Central Washington, your potential customers could be seeing your TV commercial right now. With Solely on Broadcasting, TV advertising is effective and affordable. Place your ads on the network best suited to your potential customers or get top of mind awareness with 16 cable networks, including NCW Life, your local TV channel. Give Solely on Broadcasting a call at 888-2020 today to see how easy and affordable it is to advertise on TV. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. Well, the Seahawks improved their preseason record to 2-1 with a victory on Saturday night in Carson, California against the Los Angeles Chargers. 23-15 is the final as Geno Smith vying for that backup role at quarterback. Looks pretty good for the Seahawks as uh, Russell Wilson played most of the first half. Geno came in to finish up the second quarter, played all of the second half. He would uh, complete 11 of 18 passes for 117 yards, also rushed six times for 24 yards, including an impressive scramble for a touchdown from eight yards out. Uh, big receivers for the night uh, for the Seahawks were uh, John Ursua who had a couple of catches for 52 yards. Also Tyler Lockett with two uh, receptions for 50 yards for the Seahawks on Saturday night. Also on Saturday night, uh, looking pretty good at uh, the running back position, CJ Procise. Hey, it's just happy to see him healthy and be on the field for a change. Procise uh, carried the ball five times for 32 yards, including a touchdown as well as the Seahawks get the victory by a final of 23 to 15. Here in Carson, California, yeah, I'm Eric Grandstorm on the NCW Life Channel. Hey, I know that guy. Russell Wilson finished 6-9 for 73 yards passing, rushed three times for 31 yards, says he was happy how the game went for his first team offense. I thought it was great. I thought we executed everything that we wanted to execute. I thought we made our plays. We ran the ball really well. We got some balls down the field. Guys look good. Tyler looked really, really, really sharp tonight. Uh, uh, JB looked great tonight, too, as well. Running backs did well, got the ball in the end zone. I think the offensive line did tremendous tonight. So it was exactly what we wanted to do, to be able to run the ball physical and, and uh, make our plays and, and uh, throw the ball down the field, too, and make some plays, too. Um, and so I, I thought it was a great night. Starting offense uh, built a 13-3 lead in the first half. The team rushed for nearly 300 yards in the game. Those are lines Coach Pete Carroll wanted to see. It worked out really well for us. We had some objectives and that we wanted to uh, you know, attend to, and, and uh, we really wanted to run the football tonight. And I was happy that we were able to get that done. First group ran the ball for, I don't know, 120 something in the first half, which is just what we had hoped. Um, we wanted to be real efficient and, and clean up our game, and, and uh, I thought for the most part it was it was that uh, we weren't able to stop them like we'd like with our guys in the, at the end of the game. But that's been kind of. We've been consistently not not good enough to stop them in the fourth quarter. We got to get better with those guys next week because they're going to play the whole game. So uh, Seattle wraps up the preseason Thursday night at CenturyLink Field against the three and O Oakland Raiders. Well, about 30 minutes prior to Saturday's kickoff between the Hawks and Chargers, word came out about Colts quarterback Andrew Luck retiring. Coach Carroll and Russell Wilson were asked to comment following Seattle's preseason victory. That's really surprising to hear that. Um, that's a that's a rare instance that a guy in his prime, you know, steps away from the game. Um, but I'm, you know, he, obviously he has his reasons, and and uh, um, you know, I don't have much more to say about it. But it was surprising for everybody, and he's and you wonder what about the circumstances. I think as fans and um, even as players, sometimes we forget that uh, you know there's life after this game, you know. And uh, I think that uh, a guy like Andrew, he. he uh, you know, one of the most dedicated guys. He's he's always been tremendous on the field. Um, obviously, he's ha he's battled some some things in his life with injuries and everything else. And uh, I don't I don't know um, what it was. Yeah, I haven't you know heard anything or whatever. But I, you know, I'm praying for him, praying that he stays encouraged. You know, in this game it is uh, can take a toll on us. You know, physically, but also emotionally, spiritually, everything else. And uh, I think that he's demonstrated uh, it with class. So then came the official announcement by Luck on Sunday in Indianapolis. I mean, I'm going to retire. Uh, this is not an easy decision. Uh, honestly, it's the hardest decision of my life. Uh, but it is the right decision for me. Uh, for the last four years or so, I've been in this cycle of injury, pain, rehab, injury, injury pain, rehab. Uh, and it's been unceasing and relenting, unrelenting, both in season both in, and off season. Uh, and I felt stuck in it, and the only way I see out uh, is, is to, to no longer play football. So Andrew Luck 
no longer in the NFL. Well, the Wenatchee Wild went one and two over the weekend in BCHL exhibition play. Wenatchee got goals from Brian Adams, Trevor Grabeel, and Hunter Hastings Friday in a 3-1 win at Chilliwack. Langley goalie Braden Fleming turned away all of the wild shots Saturday as the Rivermen posted a 5-0 shutout. Then in a high-scoring affair on Sunday, Coquitlam shot past the Wild. Eight five-scoring goals for Wenatchee were Tyler Young, Matt Dorsey, Dallas Farrell, Jack Bayless, and Nicholas Chemelski. The Wild will wrap up the preseason this Friday at Surrey at 7 o'clock. Regular season begins a week from Friday in Merritt against the Centennials. While we continue our fall football preview here on the NCW Life Channel, now with Cascade Cody head coach Dom Coffin. I met coach at their field in Peshaston today and asked how he hopes to bounce back from a 500 season last year. It should be a good year. We have a lot of guys coming back, um, you know, a lot of our skill positions and a couple of our solid linemen. So the kids are really looking forward to it. Um, we'll have a good group of seniors that are uh, going to hopefully take us a long ways this year. Well, everybody talks about the offseason. Uh, you told me before we started the broadcast here that uh, you guys go to, to the camp at Eastern. Uh, tell me about camp. Tell me about numbers and, and the offseason workouts because that's very important. Yeah, we've been working really hard this offseason. So in the wintertime, we were doing our 6 a.m. lifts before school started, and we had a good turnout there. Um, then we went to Eastern camp at the end of June there. It's a really good opportunity for our kids. We played a lot of really good schools, a lot of bigger 4A schools and things like that, and we're able to have some success. And so really building that confidence was something good for our seniors to be able to have. Um, then we kind of carried it into this offseason workouts this summer, which we had a good turnout as well. So we're excited so far. Kodiaks have their quarterback returning uh, three, make that uh, Carol, all Caribou trailing first teamers. We'll hear more from Coach Coffin on the, his expectations tomorrow here on the NCW Live Channel. Well, former Wenatchee Apple Sox starter Marco Gonzalez was stellar on the mound for the Mariners yesterday in Seattle as he built, uh, he and the Mariners beat the Blue Jays three to one. Gonzalez went seven strong innings, allowing one run on three hits, five strikeouts, and two walks to earn his 14th win of the season. Dylan Moore hit a solo home run. Kyle Seeger drove in a run with a double. After taking two of three from Toronto. Seattle welcomes the Bronx Bombers into town tonight for the first of three games at 7-10. Quickly on the Les Schwab American League West scoreboard last night, it was Houston over LA 11-2. Chicago beat Texas 2-zip and San Francisco over Oakland 5-4. That's a look at sports news. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. Finally tonight, thanks to Chelan County uh, Search and Rescue Crews for sharing this video on their Facebook page from this past weekend's training exercises. Canine Roland and his handler Bob Inn went to helicopter hoist training ho hosted by King County Sheriff's Office and King County ESAR. The report that Roland handled his first helicopter hoist experience very well. This procedure allows insertion and extraction from very remote areas. Nice job to Roland. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more, uh, for more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-NCWL. That's 888-6295. Also, keep it right here on the NCW Life channel tomorrow morning for Wake Up Wenatchee Valley with your host, Dan Kuntz. I'm Grant Olson, thanks for joining us. Have a great night. CW Live Channel is your home for local news, local weather, and events including live local high school sports. Watch inspiring local shows featuring local people. Don't miss Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Let's learn. Guada TV. Street Talk and Other Stuff. The 12th District. Life with Lisa. And the Arbiter of Stoke. NCW Live Channel is your local TV station.
one dealership in Wenatchee has Motor Trend's SUV of the Year and Truck of the Year. That's right, Town Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram has the all-new Jeep Wrangler and the all-new Ram 1500 pickup. Or get the best of both worlds in the new Jeep Gladiator. Visit Town Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram today for more information on these award winners and see why there's no reason to leave town to buy your next vehicle. I'm Jim Corcoran. And I'm Ken Osborne. And, and you're, you're watching, watching the, the NCW, NCW Life Channel. Channel.